Betsy Mayotte with freestudentloanadvice.org is with us answering questions. All right, this person says, if an institution has been shut down, can that debt be erased? It depends. If you were attending the institution within 180 days of when it shut down and were unable to complete your degree, then you can apply for what's called a closed school discharge. And you would do that directly through your loan servicer. All right, this next question is, do parents plus loans apply? For the debt relief, absolutely. Uh, it's based on the parents' individual, the parental income, and they apply the same way as everybody else does. Okay, and I think that answers the same question for this other person who says, are parent loan eligibility for debt relief fund? And that's the same thing, parent plus, yes? Correct. Okay, we've got a husband and wife. They both had their own loans. They consolidated them so they would just have one bill. Since they're two separate people who initially took out two separate loans, do we both qualify for some level of loan forgiveness? It sounds like what they have is what we call a spousal or joint consolidation loan, which they actually stopped making in 2006. Uh, they, the Department of Education has not given explicit guidance around uh, spousal consolidations, uh, but my gut tells me that each individual borrower will still be eligible for the forgiveness for the portion of the loan attributed to them. Of course, they still have to come underneath that cap for a married couple. That, correct. They don't get 125, well, they do get 125 a piece. That's 250 for the couple, correct? That's right. Okay, all right, so this person says, I submitted a loan forgiveness application and I'm still waiting on a response. Should I apply for the debt relief as well? There's no harm in applying for the debt relief. Uh, I suspect what this, this uh, audience member is talking about is the public service loan forgiveness application. Uh, the average processing time for that is around 120 days. It's actually got a little bit longer recently because the Department of Ed has been focusing on the broad debt relief. So don't fret that you haven't heard anything on that PSLF application yet but absolutely apply for the debt relief. Everybody should be applying for the debt relief. Mm -hmm. This person's asking, if you're still currently enrolled, will you still qualify for loan forgiveness? Maybe. Uh, they, they did a cutoff for new loans. If your loan was not dispersed uh, by, I'm sorry, June 30th of 2022, then it's not eligible for forgiveness. If it was dispersed prior to that date, then it is eligible for forgiveness. But if you are a dependent student, a dependent undergraduate student, your eligibility is actually gonna be based on your parents' income rather than yours. Okay, so their uh, debt, their student loans from maybe two years back would be possible, but the ones from this year may not because the loan may not actually, the money may not have gone to the school in time for the start of the school year. Right, most loans for a, a typical academic year, September to May, the money doesn't go out till at earliest the end of August. Mm -hmm. So the vast majority of loans for this year are not gonna qualify. Okay, that makes sense. All right, this next and question is- And you know what, is... this is a good opportunity to let people know that what's happening now is likely to never happen again. So nobody should be borrowing, anticipating forgiveness in the future. That also is good to know. All right, the next question is, I'm not sure what kind of loan I have. How do I know to file? Well, again, if you have not been due for payment, since March of 2020, then the loan is eligible. If you have been billed for payment since March of 2020, then your loan is not eligible. Uh, aside from that, call your servicer and ask them. Okay, this person says, I owe $181,000 in student loans and I feel so overwhelmed with these amount limits. What can I do? You know what, this question is a lot of why we started our nonprofit, the Institute of Student Loan Advisors. Uh, we provide free advice to all student loan borrowers. So I suggest this person reach out to us at freestudentloanadvice.org and we're happy to try to help them uh, come up with the best strategy uh, to manage their student debt. Right. And it's all for free, All it's always free. Right, freestudentloanadvice.org is what the uh, website is. We're gonna have it in the two wants to know section. We're gonna end with this one probably. Will student relief money received here be uh, taxed on my IRS uh, taxes this year? Not on your federal, but unfortunately, assuming that you're a North Carolina resident, it, a resident, it appears uh, that it will be taxed at the state level. Okay, and one last thing, this pause, we're still waiting to find out what's going on, but we should apply for student loan forgiveness even though they are not uh, processing the applications. Right, They're, they've uh, agreed not to, with the courts, to not actually forgive anything 
until this court stuff is, is settled, which I would expect would be fairly soon. Okay. All right. So we're going to hang on for that. And it's also good to know that you're probably never going to see this again. So don't be borrowing money thinking that this is going to happen year after year. This is good to know. Thank you so much for your time and your expertise, Betsy. We appreciate it. We will have her on again for sure. All right. If you want to take a look in the two wants to know section, because there's a lot of details in the president's student loan forgiveness plan and also for her website as well, you can also text the word debt to 336-379-5775 and we'll send you the information as well.